Down the bitch gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing. You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Check the floor plan. Got an all van. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome back to another post-game edition of Five on the Floor. I'm your host, Greg Sylvander. Today's floor plan with me, the coach, Sean Rochester. You can follow him at S Rochester NBA. You can follow me at Greg Sylvander on Twitter, Instagram, all the other fun places. We come to you after the Miami Heat's loss at home to the Los Angeles Clippers, 103-95. Today's floor plan, Sean and I are going to dissect the game. It was a rough one. The Heat's offense was anemic. We're going to touch on that. We're going to touch on Jimmy and Bam. We're going to touch on the Tyler and um, weird uh, late designation where he sat. Uh, So we'll get into all that before we do. Want to first shout out off the floor. That's our Discord server. You got to go there. It has all these channels where you talk with all of our uh, five on the floor listeners and Heat fans about all different things general NBA, Heat updates. You can talk about fantasy sports, gambling. Uh, it's super fun. There's even a music channel. We're going to dr- add an NBA draft channel $2.99 on desktop, $3.99 on your Apple device. That's off the floor. That's our new Discord server. You definitely want to check that out. So that's where I'm starting. But this was some bullshit. Not only was the offense just dreadful, they were outshot 16 to 8 from behind the arc, Sean. You're never going to win a game in today's NBA when you're outshot like that. Your initial thoughts on this game, which, I mean, I think we all understand that Jimmy and Bam need to lead. There wasn't enough Jimmy and Bam consistent for 48 minutes to really uh, to beat a Kawhi, James Harden, and Paul George-led team. The Clippers are one of the hottest teams in basketball right now. They showed it when they came to Miami. Your initial thoughts? You want to start on offense or defense? You used to be the point guard, so. Yeah, no, let, let, let's start on the offensive end. Okay, so offensively, obviously, you know, you finish with a 101 offensive rating. Not good enough. It's clear as day, right? The Clippers come in. They're the number one offense in the league, 122 offensive rating, and they finish with a 109. So we'll get to the defensive end, but the defensive end was good enough, but you're not good enough on offense. You didn't shoot the ball well enough. We talk a lot about shot profile. I, you, I don't know if you watch the local or the national broadcast, Greg, but JJ brought up that he talked to Spo and that Spo said he was not happy with where the shot profile is at right now. So we've talked a lot about that, which is an interesting comment. Yeah. 32% at the rim, 38% mid-range, 30% three. And just to specify, 60% of our shots within 14 feet because those short mid-ranges, a lot of Terry Rozier and guys live in that range. But like you said, 27% from behind the arc is not going to get it done, especially when the other team shoots twice as many or makes twice as many threes. It, it just like and, – and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Jimmy and Bam just got to do more for us. You're right. I think that's just ultimately how the equation works. I mean, I think other guys stepped up. It was probably the best game we've seen Terry Rozier play, at least from a scoring side of things, um, an efficiency side of things, even though he didn't shoot it well. But we just didn't have enough on that end of the floor, really, to get it done and against a very good team. Yeah, and to to kind of preface this game, Tyler Hero was slated to start, was a late scratch due to a headache. Uh, Josh Richardson started in his place. So they were missing, you know, 20 points of offense from Tyler. Duncan Robinson is still out in concussion protocol. So they did have like basically those two main shooters scores missing. But still, it's we're not going to do that thing where we say, but – and and have yes buts and only ifs no 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 this is a situation where they had enough and it just jimmy and bam didn't play well enough to really get it done i uh jimmy kind of slept he was sleepwalking for a while playing possum i i didn't love that from him to start this game i expected him to be more aggressive because that's how he's played recently and so i thought we were past that kind of feel the game out stuff i thought he was going to hit it from the jump 
Um, eventually he started to play a little bit more aggressive as the game went on, but not to the level that they need him to get to for this team to win, especially uh, when they play teams above 500 like the Clippers. This isn't some bullshit team coming through town. This is a tough team. So um, ultimately, I just didn't think it was enough, like you say, from the top two guys. And the Clippers got great play from not only their top two guys, but a guy that we've kind of maybe – He's been at the expense of a lot of jokes at Five Reason Sports, but tonight he shut us all up. Let's go to the Rocky Sports Gamer of the Night. And now on Five on the Floor, it's time for the Gamer of the Night, sponsored by Rock Esports Center, the place to eat, drink, and play all day. Host your next birthday party with them. Located at 15305 South Dixie Highway in Palmetto Bay, they've got a 5,500-square-foot state-of-the-art center equipped with all the high-end power. Play all-day passes, available for just 25 bucks. but if you mention Five Reasons... It's just $20. So mention five reasons or five RSN. You get to play all day for $20. And now, the Gamer of the Night. The Rocky Sports Gamer of the Night goes to Mr. James Harden. He did not have a Miami off night. 41 minutes, 21 points, 7 of 13 from the field, 5 threes, 11 assists, only 4 turnovers, and 8 rebounds. Dude played, he played ball i mean there's no other way around it i make a lot of fun jokes about james harden i wouldn't want to uh watch him for 82 games i know ethan wouldn't want to watch him for 82 games but he stepped up tonight uh sean anybody else that you think deserves gamer of the night mention i do want to i think I, i'm happy that you mentioned terry terry rogier was only seven of 17 from the field and missed all his threes but boy the floor game is better than i expected it to be uh so far it's just a matter of his shots starting to fall. I've liked what I've seen from him. So he gets, if if there is a guy on the heat, for me, he's the gamer of the night. But is there anyone else that you thought individually we should call out from this game? Yeah, I was I was impressed with what Terry did tonight. It seemed like he felt more comfortable. And obviously it's against a good defensive team and and they have good defensive wings that can, you know, they can be on him. So I, I really like what he does. You know, he's not De'Aaron Fox. He's not the fastest point guard. He's also not the slowest point guard. He's somewhere in the middle, but he does a good job. He's very shifty of kind of shifting gears. He kind of snakes that pick and roll and hesitates and then can go back into gear and get into that mid-range. He understands, he's seeming to start to understand where guys are going to be. And I think that's going to make that, you know, where he's not always looking for his shot. He's he's also able to spray it out to guys, get lobs, things like that. So I, I liked what he did. And I also think Josh, you know, given the context, and I know last time we were together, we gave him props for being out of the rotation late start. You know, he didn't expect to be in this position, but played well, six of 13 from the field, 14 points, three rebounds, four assists. I thought he did a pretty good job defensively, although obviously if you look at the box score, the Clippers, uh, their wings did very good tonight. So I just think, you know, give Josh a little bit of praise because he stepped up and he has been stepping up over the last last week or so. He has been stepping up over the last week or so. And to that point, let's go to the play of the night. And now it's time for the Insurance by Lynette play of the night, sponsored by insurancebylynette.com and A Aggressive Insurance Agency. You can reach out to our friend Lynette at 954 581 8800. That's 954 581 8800 or insurancebylynette.com. That's insurancebylynette.com with two N's and two T's. Your best play for auto insurance, homeowners insurance, condo insurance, life insurance, or a retirement program. Reach out to Lynette at insurancebylynette.com. So you were talking about Josh. I had to go here. Josh had a touchdown pass. It was Pro Bowl day. There was all the Pro Bowl game stuff. I saw Tua was trying to hit targets and such. Josh Richardson had the play of the night from the Heat's perspective as he launched a pass down the floor that connected with, it was Jimmy, right, that he connected with? Yeah, Jimmy um, went up and got it. And, and Jimmy went up and got it, got the bucket. So that was our best football play of the night. But it was probably one of the few bright spots in what otherwise was a game where the Heat kind of looked outclassed, if we're being honest. Like you just saw a team that was better than you come in there. I don't necessarily think Tyler and Duncan would have made a huge difference. But I'll ask you, do you think we know what they would have brought offensively. They would have definitely helped maybe that three-point shooting disparity, et cetera. But what, what do you think, Sean, about – the notion that this game should be thrown out the window because Tyler and Duncan did not play. 
definitely not thrown out the window. I, I mean, I think I agree with what you said. You know, they obviously would have boosted the offense in, in different ways. And and obviously the three point shooting, it's not going to help the free throws. We only got 11 free throws. So those guys typically aren't going to help with that, but they're going to be movement guys. They're going to help with uh, spacing. But the con of that is they're also going to create defensive problems. And, and the Clippers are a good offensive team where those are two guys you can target. And if you get them in switches against Kawhi, Paul, Norman Powell, Harden, Westbrook, I mean, the list is long, right? That's a problem for those guys. And I'm, I'm speaking of Duncan and Tyler and, and for other guys too, to, to give them a, a fair shake on this. But, you know, it would be nice to have them out there, but I definitely don't think you just throw this game away and say, oh, well, we're, we could have been better than the Clippers or we could have been as good as the Clippers. Like they're the better team than we are. Let's just be frank about that. And it's tough because we're running out of days now. What we're four days away from uh, trade deadline, and we are. The, we are the four days are away. Still, yeah, the answers are still out there somewhere, and um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it, what it is, but you can't get you can't survive with an offense that's sputtering like this around a hundred offensive rating every night. You're just not going to win enough games. No, and I don't know that there's any move out there that's going to fix the offense, so we should probably be clear about that as we approach the deadline. No move is going to fix. Um, what they need at the top of the roster in games like the game tonight against the Clippers, what they didn't get from Jimmy and Bam, maybe as early as they needed to. Bam was really good really early, and then that kind of just went away. They can't, they need a full 48 minutes from those guys. And um, one thing I did hear on the trade front that I think everyone should keep an eye on is Kelly Olinick out in Utah. I think that that's a name Heat fans know and should um, just keep tabs on as we watch Thursday approach. I think that there's a chance that the Heat could uh, explore what it would take to bring him back to Miami for a, a reunion of sorts. So just keep an eye out for that. I'm not saying anything's imminent whatsoever, but I think it's worth keeping tabs. Um, let's go to the Eric Rubenstein injury report. And now it's time for the official five on the floor injury report sponsored by our friend Eric Rubenstein, the personal injury attorney born and raised in Lauderdale, Florida, lives in Miami, went to St. Thomas. He's a South Florida guy and a huge Miami Heat fan. But the important thing is he can help you get your money that you deserve when something happens to you. So reach out to our guy, Eric Rubenstein. Again, ericrubenstein.com or ask about me. I got you on Instagram. And now... The injury report. So back to the injury report. Tyler Hero missed the game with a headache. I don't think that that's anything long term. I would expect to see him back in the next ball game. Duncan Robinson continues to be out with concussion like symptoms. That's a touch and go situation. I'm going to say he's probably going to miss another game coming up. Uh, Jovich, Orlando Robinson, Cole Swider, all were available along with Thomas Bryant, but all got DMP CDs tonight. That's do not, didn't play coach's decision. Um, Jamal Cain was back, but I don't know that he was active. He'll be available going forward. And RJ Hampton also was uh, on G League assignment, but can be brought back. And Drew Smith is out. That's your injury report. Final thoughts here, Sean. Just going forward, as you think about this team ahead of the deadline, do you think that they... Where do you lean here? Let's get you on record with where you lean. I think that they likely don't make a move, and if they do, it's probably something pretty small that has a lot to do with maybe um, cost considerations, we'll say. Where do you stand as we are heading into the week of the deadline? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Obviously, I trust what you're saying and what you're hearing, so – it just doesn't seem likely to me. I know a lot of people want to connect dots tonight that, uh, you know, Tyler was pulled for some magical reason that we're going to find out tomorrow. And I just don't feel that's the case. I don't think that that's the type of trade that you make mid season, unless something is secretly brewing. I just don't know who's on the marketplace that you would trade him for. Uh, it means more of a summertime move. So, you know, if, if kids is Kelly Olinick, I think that helps your offense, but it also comes with some, you know, some cons too that on the defensive end of the floor. Um, you know, the the guys that keep coming up, I just think it's it's got to be some of those three fours that can guard up, that can stretch the floor, but are more defensively inclined. And those are guys that every contender wants. So it's not just a Miami Heat thing. Like those guys are just waiting for us to pluck them from other teams. A lot of contenders want them. So I, I don't expect – I'm going to keep my expectations low, and if something happens, I'll be pleasantly surprised. 
I think that's the right way to approach this deadline. I don't, I think that they've made their move. If you kind of sandwich that into what deadline activity uh, will come, you will get your dopamine fix of all your Woj bombs and Shams bombs. Don't worry, they'll come. But I don't know that they'll involve the Miami Heat. Uh, I don't want to end the show tonight. We didn't want to end the show tonight without talking about the Miami Heat defense because tonight it was probably good enough to win. Um, Sean, your thoughts on just overall, this is mainly an offensive issue with this ball club, right? Like I, I think we've, we've probably landed in that space with some finality, correct? Yeah. I mean, the defense has been leaky at times. I still think point of attack is an issue, but tonight it was good enough. Um, I was surprised. And I know in the previous meeting with the Clippers, we did play a lot of zone. I was surprised with how they shoot the ball, how much zone we did play. Yeah. Um, but the results were, I would say largely good. I mean, yes, they got hot early on. They could not make shots. And that's why we really were in the game and leading the game at a lot of that first half. So I, you know, I don't know. I, I think Spo is just a magician on that end of the floor that he's going to be able to take seven to nine guys, throw them out there and they're going to have a competent defense. Uh, the offensive part is a little bit more tricky. So I don't know what your thoughts were on defense. I think tonight it was good enough, but yeah. long term, it's got to be, it's got, it's, it's going to be what carries us. I think they're, they're competing hard. I feel like um, in today's offensive outbursts that are taking place for them to do what they did tonight against the Clippers showed that it was good enough to beat the Clippers. But to the point, if the offense is not going to be there, they're going to need even more from the defense. And I don't know that you can ask for more. So they're in a tough spot there. It's kind of like um, trying to squeeze blood out of a rock. You're not going to get very far. And um, they've kind of maximized what they have on this roster offensively, even with Tyler out tonight. Um, I, I just don't see that that's going to necessarily swing things. And it may have even hurt the defense. Um so to your point, I think this was just a night where the Clippers were the better team, the um, more uh, in tune team and just in rhythm team in the regular season. That's a group that could potentially come out of the Western Conference. Like you talk about sleeper squads. Mm -hmm. You do you, you feel me on that, that I, that the Clippers are one of those teams that kind of maybe this is the year they could try to push through. I threw a Kawhi MVP bet down last week at I think plus fifteen thousand. So Jeez. I I know that you know they all have their playoff shortcomings at times. So it's a team that's kind of weird to trust, but they're playing pretty damn good. And um, I think that's the advantage of making those early trades. And we did a little bit later than them, obviously, but it gave us some time to ramp up before the trade deadline. I, I wanted to ask you, what are you thinking about Jaime right now? I think he's you know coming back from injury and it's taking time, but any yeah. thoughts? It just seems like he looks like he's hit the wild. rookie wall a little yeah. bit. And I also think that there's just a getting back from the injury, um, finding his space in this new Tyler hero environment. If we're just going to be honest, cause those things collided with each other. Um, I think that uh, this, all that's happening, I wish he would get a damn break at the all-star uh weekend um but it looks like he's probably going to play in the rising stars game and dunk so he's not going to get much of a break but he needs one so i don't know how that they find him that i know that the heat are very careful with practices and he's a rook so he's gonna get he's gonna have to play he's supposed to be one of the young horses that can go but right now he just looks physically like he's maybe hit a little bit of a wall and um maybe he catches a second wind but for now i think that they need to just it just temper your expectations, understand he's a rookie. Ultimately, I think he'll bounce back from this. That's kind of where I stand on the whole Jaime Hawkes thing. I'm not overly concerned, but I just, I do think that like there was a moment this season where we were talking about, could he become the heat's third best player? And I just think that this is a great moment to understand that those expectations may be a little lofty at this point. Yeah. It's not like we're, we're now exploring trading him in the next four days by any means. It's just, hell no. He's a rookie. He's very good. They know what they have in him. You're going to have highs and lows with a young guy like that, even though he's an older rookie. Um, and to your point, like All-Star Week, I know they play Wednesday. It's Valentine's Day in Philly. They play, which obviously is great for me. My only love is is coming to Philly so I can watch the Heat play that night. Uh -huh. And uh, I already got tickets lined up. So they get a couple of days off. The Friday night would be the Rising Stars. Saturday night would be the dunk contest. And then they generally don't play again until like Wednesday or Thursday of the following week. So hopefully You're he right. can – you know, jump away. I'm sure they'll probably get together a few days early to, 
you know, at least a day early to get together and get things, you know, back in shape and, uh, you know, get some shots up and stuff like that. So I agree with you though. It's, it's a wall, not a, uh, impenetrable wall, right. Or what is the, what is the quote? Yeah. Like Zoe would run through that wall. Jaime will run through it too. It's not that big of a wall. It's not that thick of a wall. Exactly. That's a great way to end the show. The heat did not give you a great result though. They ended up uh, going down in defeat to the Los Angeles Clippers. Let's see if they bounce back in their next one. We'll have you covered for it. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to our sponsors. Sean, appreciate you on the episode. Peace out. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. After all, someone needs to listen to my dad. <laughs>